So here we are uh, at the studio, and I'm here with a man who needs no introduction. So I will introduce him to you as Skeppy. Hello. <laughs> so <laughs> that, was, uh, that was it. We're, we're, we're done. Cut the camera. No. So just a short time ago, I was uh, just getting the last couple of things together, and I got a text from Hannah Payton, and I said to her, guess what I'm doing? And she thought about it a bunch and she said, eating a hot dog? I have no other guess. So then I sent her a picture of uh, the two of us. And then she was like, oh my God, tell him hi. So I thought we could call her on camera and, and you know, tease her. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Hello. Hey, Hannah. It's Mr. Technodad again, and I'm here with Skeppy. Hi. Hey. So Hi. We're, we're recording now. We're calling you on camera. Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's basically, it's just a cheap publicity stunt, but I, I really wanted to do it. <laughs> wow, that, um, that's a lot of pressure. It is. It really is, and I sprang it on you, and it's like <laughs> totally unfair, and I'm doing it anyway. It's all good. But hello. Uh, so how's the kitty doing? Bubs? He yes, Bubs. Great. Oh my gosh, he's just my little my best friend. I love him so much. I he's love great. I love my little floofy. Yeah. So you know we had um, last night we were watching TV on the sofa, and when we first showed up and Zach came in the house, uh, everybody knows your name is Zach, right? Yeah, pretty much. Hannah, everyone knows your real name is Charlene, right? For sure. Okay. <laughs> Wait, Hannah's name is Charlene? <laughs> Since when? No, actually. <laughs> Wait, this is a joke. Her real name, actually, her real name is Dave. Yeah. No, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> I would be, I would be like that. Wow. This is how these things get started. <laughs> Why did you say eating a hot dog? Yeah. <laughs> I was just like, what's the stupidest thing I can say right now? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah, I think I did pretty good, honestly. <laughs> so what I was going to say was uh, uh, when Skeppy first came over, Floof j did what he always does, which is just went absolutely ballistic, bouncing off the walls and uh, going crazy. Like, oh boy, uh, a cool human being. And <laughs> after, I mean, he oh, did that for sorry. like two hours or so. And, but... Ultimately, there was a point where we're all hanging out on the sofa and Floof came over and like cozied up, like pushing, <laughs> on, pushing on his leg and rolled onto his back and is like, you may pet me now. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that's, so, like, that's just so cute, but also so bratty. Yes, exactly. That's a pretty good description. Oh <laughs> so I, I actually... Uh, just recently found out that um, Skeppy has a dog that is very similar looking to Floof, only normal sized. Normal sized? Yeah. That's, that is true. Uh, Floof I is never like. I thought about it that way. Yeah, yeah, your dog is like dog sized, whereas mine is like small cat. <laughs> dog sized. <laughs> okay, well, um, videotape is expensive and. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Wait, videotape? I, you know, <laughs> the thing is, when you get to 60 years old, what are we recording on? SSDs. We're recording on Samsung brand T7 USB-C SSDs. Okay, yes. That's, that's, that's very accurate. accurate. I... That's not a product placement. That's just what we're using. Now you know. <laughs> now you know. I can go into like what the cameras are. There's a light over Actually. there. You did important stuff. So uh, uh, Stefan is like texting me a bunch of stuff. So I should probably answer that live on the air as well. Yeah. So Hannah, you've been wonderful. We're going to send you a copy of the home game because you've been such a good sport. And is anyone going to get that joke? No. You, nobody knows what the no. home game is anymore. This is my problem trying to be a YouTuber, is all of my references are current, like, 
all through the 70s and 80s and into like the mid 90s. Honestly, I didn't really get it. So in the old days, you. I'm honest. I'm gonna act like I did too, but I didn't know. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a smart move. That's a good strategy. In the old days, if you were watching a game show like The Price Is Right or something, Jeopardy, mm -hmm. then and, and you know it's like 1992 or 1987 or something, and somebody comes on as a guest and they maybe they don't do that great. They send them home with a copy of a board game based on the game show that they were just in. And why? It is a consolation prize. It's to That's not a very good consolation It's not prize. a very good consolation, but a consolation prize <laughs> is not supposed to be a good prize. It's only supposed to console you. That's you lost. why they call You're it. The worst yeah. item we could imagine. See if 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 it, if it were today we would just we would just go like that. <laughs> Well, that's one way to do it, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I made a rude gesture, Hannah, just so you. It was an L. <laughs> I, well, I mean, yeah. I think it was <laughs> that's pretty rude, though. Yeah. I can't figure out how to get off this call. What, what do I do? Bye, Charlene. Bye bye. <laughs> bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, it's Mr. Techno Dad, and I'm here in the studio with Skeppy. Skeppy, who is uh, an amazing guy who I've known of for a long time and known in person for six months or so, and he's super cool. I appreciate that very much. I, I also think you're very cool. Oh, thank you, man. So um, we invited Skeppy to come out and meet with us and do stuff on camera and also we're going to talk about you know who and uh, he stayed at our house. He has been staying at our house. That makes it sound like I'm kicking you out as soon as the camera stops. No, don't kick me out. <laughs> <laughs> I need a place to stay tonight. He, he has been staying at our house. I gave him the option of either the lovely guest bedroom or the blanket fort. He picked the guest bedroom, which I, you know, either way, I had to clean the bed off. The bed is normally used to store consumer electronics like VR headsets or a Raspberry Pi or a tangle of HDMI cables. Yes. You didn't get to see that though. I saw cables. Well, yeah, but they weren't on the bed. They, they were, were like the shoved yeah. off to the side. Many electronics. Yes. You know what? I was gonna I was gonna bring the Dora cup today, and I didn't do that. And I was gonna bring the dog. Wait, Dora. Cup? And I didn't do that. You don't know about the Dora cup. No. So uh, we <laughs> we have a little purple Dora the Explorer branded like like the kind of you know water cup you keep in your bathroom. Right. And um, I don't understand this at all, but apparently it appeared in a number of Technoblade videos and entered the collective unconscious and. It's like a huge thing. People were talking about it on Reddit, and I actually went and went through like some counters, some old cabinets, and like I found the Dora cup, and I posted a picture of it online, and everybody was very impressed. I hope I can see it later. I will. I will show it to you. Perfect. It's it's among my most prized possessions. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Why did you just look at me like that? <laughs> I, how should I look at you? No, no, I'm sorry. Perfect. Like this. Very good. I just, you know, we got the new, we got the new merch coming out and I did some fashion modeling. I really think the world is ready for more balding, overweight, older men as clothing models. From the pictures you showed me, I thought they looked really good. Thank you. I feel like I could compete handily in the looks department with Kate Upton. She has nothing on you. We have like spent the entire day and all day yesterday just like setting up cameras and cameras and cameras and lights and microphones. You can't see the microphone, it's right there. And it's not really close enough. And this room is huge, so you're still picking up. I'm sure I sound like, hello. Hello. And as a result, we're both exhausted, so we're not gonna be funny. No, we didn't get that much sleep either. Yeah. Because of One Punch Man. Yeah. I was shocked, shocked, I say, to discover that Skeppy was not familiar <laughs> with the One Punch Man anime. So naturally, I had to indoctrinate him. After the twins went to bed, we started watching 
One Punch Man, and we watched several episodes, and then it was really late, and I went to bed, and Demeter and I are lying in bed, and it's like you can hear another episode come on. You could hear it? Well, I mean, you can tell the TV's oh, on. Oh, okay, okay. It wasn't yeah, like I could tell you what the dialogue was, but it's like <laughs> we were like directly over where the TV room is. Mm -hmm. And so if the TV's on, like, you know. <laughs> you know how the TV in the next room sounds. Yeah. We could hear that. Such and a good show. Such a good show. And uh, we, we spent a bunch of time this morning at breakfast talking about Moo Men Rider. Very important character. I seem to have lost the thread completely of what we're doing, so. Questions. 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 We have questions. Uh, many thanks to the fine people of the Technoblade subreddit for providing us with an enormous number of fun and exciting questions to choose from. And something else we did, we spent a bunch of time working on uh, putting a big monitor right here so we could show the questions and then we could never get the frame rate thing to so anyway, we have a monitor, but you don't. So maybe we'll do editing, editing. power of editing. Yeah, maybe I'll get someone else to do editing because I'm not someone who gets things done. I'm like that. Yeah. Sometimes, mostly, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, a guy named Hum Her asks, are there any off-camera stories you'd like to share? Could be funny or just a memory that stands out. Similar question from Liz the... Kidig? Is Kidig a Pokemon? I think it's Liz the Kid, I guess. Like IG. Oh, 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 that makes perfect sense. A lot of times when I don't understand something in somebody's name, it's a Pokemon. <laughs> You're not wrong, except I know like probably three Pokemon. I just assume Blastoise? the same thing as you. No, I don't know. Charizard? Yeah. Dialga? No. Pikachu? Yep. Meowth? No. Snorlax? No. Munchlax? Diglett, Ecans. You know a lot of Pokemon. No, no, no. I have never seen the Pokemon show. <laughs> really? I have never played the Pokemon card game. How do you know about them? They're Pokemon? everywhere. Yeah, but you got two. Two you, of the three. You, yes. I actually did a internship in college in the Kanto region. That's another Pokemon reference. It's just oh, a, I did. just Completely a dumb went joke. over my head. Aren't you going to ask who the third one was? Oh, who was the third one? Oh, wait. I forgot. Shoot. Kirby. Kirby. Is Kirby a Pokemon? Is Kirby a Pokemon? No, Kirby is not what? a Pokemon. Did oh, Kirby... Jigglypuff, Jigglypuff. Jigglypuff. <laughs> there we go. I was thinking of Super Smash. Kirby That's is a completely thing. So uh, the question was, what was Skeppy's favorite memory of techno on or off camera? There are so many. Um, I can't narrow it to just one, but when I first ever met Technoblade, it was through his live stream chat. He was playing Sky Wars. And I was like spamming his chat, trying to get his attention, do whatever I can to play with him. And immediately, I just thought he was hacking. I just <laughs> thought he was a hacker from the start. And he was using like a ghost client. Like there's no way Technoblade is this good. And he was. He literally destroyed every single player. And I don't know why that's the first thing that came to my head. There's so many. The next thing that just popped in my head was uh, we did this video where lava rises every minute. Mm. And I was on this like tower and I thought like I had him because I had like the Y advantage, like the elevation, right. whatever. And the high ground. Yeah, the high ground. <laughs> you high have ground. the high ground. Thank you. <laughs> and he just like, he killed me in like a way that I can't even begin to describe. Like that's happened so many times. But every time I think I have the advantage in um, yeah. any game mode with Techno, he just... I, I can't help but wonder if the Pythagorean theorem was involved in your loss in having the high ground. <laughs> well, I didn't see it that way, but I'm sure somehow that was... It's possible. Yes. I was watching a video last night where he was playing Sky Wars and was not using a weapon. And I think you were in that one. It was like from 2017. And I guess he was like just bored or something, so he decided he would destroy everyone with his, with his little hands and his little pig hands. And like always, watching him play the game is just like completely confusing because I've said this before, you watch him play Minecraft and it's like, there's another guy, there he is, and they, they come together and then this guy dies. And then he goes up to the next guy and they come together and this guy dies. 
and it just happens again and again, and there's no obvious mechanism to it. So, <clears> who <throat> oh boy. I'll tell an off-camera story since we're here in the studio. There's a kitchen elsewhere in the building, uh, like a commercial kitchen for film crews that come here and shoot. And uh, that kitchen is where we shot cooking with Technoblade. And one of the things I remember about it was, you know, I have my classical view of filmmaking and so forth. And, and we get up there, it's just, just the two of us. And he wants to do something and I'm like, okay, wait, that's gonna, that's gonna cross the line or that's not gonna edit together well or whatever. He only ever had one response to every bit of filmmaking advice I gave him. He said, dad, nobody cares, nobody cares. Just do it. <laughs> and then you watch the finished video and it's like, ah, yeah, it works. So there you go. That was, that was the great help that I was able to give him as a filmmaker, coming up with ideas that nobody cares about. Let's go to the next question. Ram Goose, dude. Okay, so Ram Goose, I, I know who this is and he likes ice cream cake and I don't. It's a bitter rivalry between us about ice cream cake, just to be aware. <laughs> the story is it was like 1985-ish and I went to a party and they had ice cream cake and I got food poisoning. Wow. I ate a lot of ice cream cake and I've had food poisoning a number of different times. This was something on a completely different plane and I, I think it was later the next day and I can remember lying on a gurney crying uncontrollably. and and just looking at the nurse and saying, it hurts so bad. Uh, oh my goodness, it was painful. And I just really have not looked at ice cream cake the same ever since. I get that. I would not like a certain food if that happened either. Yeah. So Ram Goose writes, what was the one time you felt closest with techno and what was the one time you felt most rivaled with techno? Supposedly, hmm, all right. I'm not sure I understand the full parsing of all of the things he wrote. But the first sentence is very clear. Also, welcome back, Techno Dad, in that I didn't post for 72 hours or something. We didn't cause an uprising while you were away. So they've been slacking off is what he said. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say the closest I felt with Techno is probably Bed Wars. And the most rivaled I felt with Techno was Sky Wars. <laughs> so kind of opposites, but we always teamed together in Bed Wars. When, like, this was 2017, 2018, we would just stream Bed Wars constantly every day. And, I mean, I got free wins. I got a lot of free <laughs> wins every day, which was cool. And Sky Wars, I always would try to win because I love winning Sky Wars. I love Sky Wars, but against Techno, I mean, you're just not gonna win. So that's <laughs> probably where I felt the most rival. That makes sense. I guess I, I'm, Certain that's a question for you and not for me, but I will just say that I always felt really close to him, even though we didn't always, I, like the relationship that he and I had was very much like a intellect one. It was like the head communicating with the other head and not so much the heart, which changed in the last six months. But it was, I mean, he was a guy who was very much in his head. So we had a fabulous, intellectual closeness. Not, not like me, I'm, I do not get up in my head. I'm very much, I'm joking. I'm like the worst at that. I saw a <clears throat> text message. I don't remember where I saw it, but it was between you and Techno. So like, you posted it. Mm -hmm. And it was a meme that you had made mm -hmm. where it was talking to my son <laughs> through memes yes. instead of like emotionally talk I don't remember the exact I will edit it was a it was a Drake meme yes it's like open and honest emotional communication with my son <laughs> and then communicating only through memes that's the one yeah made me think of that yeah very accurate yeah that was I was like feeling that and then I made that meme in response so there we go. And then as far as rivalry, I just have a firm rule that you do not engage in rivalry with family members. You don't, you're not, you're not competing with your girlfriend. You're not, you, you need to like stay out of the sphere that your kids are building their identity in. Yeah. All right. Why don't you read this one? <laughs> How's the 100 years of training going? And then we have a lot of responses isn't Skeppy up to like 500, at least 700, 
It's around a thousand <laughs> and then a million. And I, I just want to point out the username of the guy who said, I think it's a million, Frosch von Mittwoch. Mittwoch. Basically, that's uh, German for it's Wednesday, my dudes. Oh, really? Oh, look at the it's, picture. It's yeah. The, yeah, it's the way it's the, it's the, 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 the Wednesday frog is what his username is. My dude. I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> the how's, how's the 100 years of training? I think it actually may have started at 100 years, and then we battled again, it went up, and then we battled again, it went up again, and so on. But yeah, it's going all right. I'm still getting there. I'm still in training. A couple more years. And by a couple, I mean many. So I will get there. I am training, but uh, I have a goal in mind. Awesome. Next question. Uh, okay, I've never been clear on how to say this guy's name. Ray de Sucks. Ray de Sucks. Ray de Sucks. Did Skeppy manage to pay the $20 he still owns Techno for Bosbleef? It's Bosbleef, right? It's not Bowsbleef. No, no, Bowsbleef, yeah. Because it's like a bow and arrow. Yeah, sort of like a TNT run, except with bows. Right. That was great that you explained a Minecraft reference with another Minecraft reference to, right, a, right. to a guy who doesn't <laughs> play Minecraft. No, yeah. <clears throat> um, explain it in TF2 terms. TF2 terms, Explain okay. it in Pokemon terms. Okay, that one I can't do. TF2 <laughs> I can actually try. Okay, let's do, the, do TF2. Shoot, bullet, <clears throat> floor falls. Oh! That's my best explanation. That's cool. Okay, so for TNT run, if you jump on the block, it will fall. Meaning for the bow sleeve, if you right. shoot the block, it falls. Right. So I somehow, I don't remember what I said, but there was some sort of wager on the line where if Techno wins, I will give him $20. He won. I tried to give him the money at some point. I did. <laughs> but the meme just was ongoing. So. For either one, can you recall a specific memory with Techno with the most laughs? Like, he said something, or you two were bantering and you couldn't catch your breath. You were laughing so hard. I know there must be a lot, so this doesn't have to be the top one, just one that sticks out. Yeah. Yeah, there's a few. For me, whenever I think of this specific moment, I just can't not laugh. It's when... <laughs> I'm laughing already. <laughs> it's when I was typing something on a sign, and it was like... Tell me what one this certain word is on the sign, which like there's no way he would know which sign had which. Probably explaining this very poorly, <clears throat> but I put the two signs down and I'm like, tell me which one has this word on it. And he knew, and I was like, how? What? He's happy. That was my go-to. He's an F5. He just somehow has free cam and can see, but he uh, heard my microphone of me typing like. The keyboard and knew which word had more letters in it uh, yeah. and went to the right <laughs> I don't know but he knew and at the time I just found that really 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 funny I still do I, that I know exactly the moment you're talking about and it's it's wonderful I should also mention that I'm texting other people while you're telling your stories because <laughs> <laughs> No worries. I'm realizing we didn't angle the cameras in such a way. Like I'm still, like if we go to left camera, I'm still, I think I'm still in frame on left camera. So I can't, I can't like, you know, scratch. No. <laughs> uh, okay. I, so I was actually, I was thinking about this question earlier today and I'm, I'm I kind of like, whenever he was around, it was always laughs. It was always banter. It was never not banter. Like if he went to bed, it was not banter. But if he was like in the room, that, I mean, he always, he had, there was a comeback for everything. And we were constantly doing like this. And I would ask him to, you know, any little thing I would say, can you, because <laughs> he'd come in the kitchen and then he'd want something to eat. And he would open all the cabinet doors looking for something. And then when he found it, he would leave. And then the cabinet doors were all open. It's like, <laughs> can you please just, shut the cabinet doors and he would say you're not my real dad or it's and again just i am in fact his real dad um or he would say you know you want me to do two things or it just there was always there was always a comeback and there was always we always everything was a goof like uh you know any any time i showed any technical competence at anything 
he would say nerd <laughs> and he called the twins boomers you know everything was everything was just skewed so i know what you mean from the minecraft and online experiences yeah i can only imagine what it would have been like irl <laughs> yeah all right for skeppy what was going through your head when you met techno dad for the first time for techno oh yeah that's yours but um uh, yeah, i'll read that part okay well we met for the first time in new york actually and i'm not gonna lie at first i was a little bit nervous i'm always nervous meeting new people but as soon as we talked for like two minutes literally i just wasn't anymore and it just felt very normal yeah. natural and we shared stories we had a lot to talk about and it was very cool honestly but i guess that was what was going through my head. So uh, we were there for the Sarcoma Foundation Gala, and they asked me to come up with someone to present the Courage Award, which I was going to accept on Technoblade's behalf. And so Skeppy's the name that I've heard the longest ago and the most often of, of people that I've heard. From the earliest days, I always felt very, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but I always, the, the relationship that he had with you always made me feel good as a dad. Like, my son is connecting with people in a positive way. And I know that he felt all kinds of different things about you. In the beginning, I think he probably kind of had a little bit of like an older brother vibe, but then like it turned around and then there were things that you were teaching him. And then he was like, dad, Skeppy's got this stuff figured out. I gotta, I gotta figure out what he's doing. And it was just like, that's, it made me feel good. It always made me feel good. And yeah, so. Uh, okay, um, Technodad, how did it feel to become aware of all the online friends that your son was collecting? And then for both, what great things came from knowing Technoblade and his community? Uh, <laughs> I, I think this is a perfect opportunity to return to teasing Hannah. <laughs> Marlene, Charlene. Charlene. Right. Yeah, Charlene Payton. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, as far as like becoming aware of what was happening with Technoblade and his, y you know, popularity, a video that I saw early on that made me realize like was Hannah's video called How I Became Friends with Technoblade because she kind of fangirls in it in the sweetest way I have Nothing but good things to say about Hannah. She's wonderful, but I will I will tease her any chance I get. I, it's just like when we called her, she she picks up the phone and I hear her start talking, and my brain just goes, "How can I, like, <laughs> just give her? I just want to give her a little." And the the first time we had a conversation, she after I'd been kind of teasing her a bunch, she said, "You know, this like nonstop way that you're teasing me is like." exactly how techno was with me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I mean, how it felt about, I don't know. I don't, I'm not clear if I have anything else coherent to say. What great things came from knowing Technoblade and his community. And it, like, for me, I've really gotten plugged into his community just in the last six months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> desktop notifications. <laughs> Your cell phone is in airplane mode, right? No. Someone can call right now. I'm going to call you. No, later. don't call. I'm don't calling. Oh, my God. I'm going to go get it. Fine, I'll get it. Okay, I won't call you. Oh, I was ready to get up. I thought you had it in your pocket, though. No, it's right there. Where? Right there, under the TV. Oh, I'm getting a call. You're going to call? Oh, my God. Yep. You should, you should take it. Yeah, sorry. Got to go. Hello? Hi. Hi. What is up? Uh, I just wanted to say subscribe to Technoplay. I already am. Oh, awesome. Me too. I'll see you later. Are you a sponsor, though? No. <laughs> channel member. I'm a channel member. I'm a, I'm a mod. I think I'm a mod. Yeah, you are. Cool. All right. That was completely pointless. Yeah, very I unnecessary. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> I absolutely adore the Technoblade community. You guys are awesome, and my admiration just continues to grow, and I'm happy to be a part of that community, and... I'm happy to help people out in whatever way I can. And uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what was Skeppy? 
Yes. What was your favorite collaboration with Techno? I'd love to see his opinion. Definitely. <laughs> you already know. Hi, yeah. Skeppy tries to troll me, but I troll him first. That video was so much fun. I love that video. That's my favorite collaboration. Even though I have many favorites, but if I had to pick one. That one's just like nonstop hilarity. I love it. I love it. Everything about it. The parkour, moving, <laughs> him like outsmarting all of the parkour, going outside of the map. That was when we did the sign thing. <laughs> that was when the sign thing happened, yeah. <clears throat> Funny story, or I guess you may have already talked about it, but Dream was the one who had made yes. and coded that entire thing. So, yeah, so when Dream was out here, whenever that was, I don't remember, a few months back, and he and I were just chatting, not on camera, we were just hanging around chatting, and I forget how it came up exactly, but he said, oh yeah, I made that level. And I was like, <laughs> you're <laughs> kidding me. That just like, that's mind blowing. Yeah, he made that entire thing and he did it really fast too. And yeah, one of my favorite videos ever. Yeah, wild. So you knew Dream before he was like anyone. Before he had a YouTube channel. Or yeah. I guess made videos, but yeah, he's a really good developer. So he made it and yeah, he was a mod on a Minecraft server I have. Mm -hmm. Or not a mod, a dev. So that's mm -hmm. how right. I knew him. Uh, Bad Boy Halo introduced me to Dream. So that's kind of like the little backstory behind it. So uh, do you think like I could call up Dream sometime and like offer him like a hundred bucks to do some software development for me? Is that Dream, if you're watching this, <laughs> if you ever want dev on Invaded, text me. That sounds, no, no, I'm sure he would. That, sure sounds he like, would. that sounds like a good offer. Sounds like a good offer. For Skeppy, how did you first hear about Techno? Did you just randomly end up on the same team in something, have a mutual friend, watch one of his videos? What's the story? Streaming. I would go and stream every single day in like 2017, 2018. And the community was much smaller, so I would check who was streaming Minecraft and Technoblade would be there. And I just started watching him through that. So through streaming was how I first saw it. His channel. But again, I don't know if I made this sufficiently clear. He was inspired to do streaming. I mean, I, I, I know he was just like, oh, streaming is a thing. And so he would do some streaming and then like whatever. But it was watching you that made him focus on streaming and start seeing streaming as a specific way to develop his channel. And he was very interested in in imitating what you were doing and the success you were having. Yeah, I had never really knew that or known that um, up until recently, but um, I was looking back on some of the chats we had and we were talking about like the uh, YouTube yeah. streaming <laughs> yeah. of how like powerful it was. It had just come out like around that time where YouTube was really pushing it. And yeah, I remember he and I would just constantly be live one or the other and I miss it. <laughs> I miss it a lot. Yeah. Okay, now you read mine. Okay. What was the potato war like from <laughs> your end? Watching Techno farm potatoes nonstop for months in Minecraft. If you heard about the video premise before publishing, did you think the video was going to do as well as it did? Yeah, so, uh, you know, my first impression, the, the, the first effect that Potato Wars had on me was that I saw techno even less than normal. <laughs> it's like he would just, he'd be in his room and I'd stick my head and he's like, I'm, 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 I'm busy. And I was just like, you know, he was just at it constantly. And on those occasions when he would take a break, he would come out and like we were, we were talking about how a lot of times he was very quiet, but then he would be very talkative. So when I did see him, he was just going a mile a minute like okay i discovered that if i use i don't i don't even remember all the all the high pixel mini game terminology but it's like i've got rabbits and i've got automata and the, if you get a plus 3 uh halter top of force then it gives you an extra 20% of you know all this uh all this terminology and he's like look i did a spreadsheet and it's like I've never gotten to use calculus before, but now I'm doing a optimization. Of, <laughs> and it's just, you know, it was crazy. It was like the kind of obsessive detail 
work that uh, you sort of think of um, artists that end up going crazy. All the, all the stuff that he says in there is like a polished version of what he would say when he would come out of his room. He would be explaining all those, all those things that he had going on, except when I was hearing it live, it was like, I haven't figured out if this or this is better. You know, it's like there was a lot of stuff that was in progress and he had a lot of ideas about what to do with it in progress. But then the, the stuff in the videos is like the, after he had figured everything out. And it's like, this is my... I also got to be privy to all kinds of details that I was completely unable to appreciate, like he would say, it turns out that if you face northeast, Squid Kid thinks that actually takes 3% off how high you can raise your right leg when you're digging, you know, whatever the hell it is. <laughs> and uh, I said a bad word. Whatever the goodness me, whatever the heck that sort of thing would be. All the stuff where it's like, you know, Sun Tzu says, whatever you do, don't reveal all your strategies in a YouTube video, you fool. <laughs> I would, I would get to hear them all. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> this is uh, potatoes, right? In, in, in Minecraft. And what can you do with the potatoes again once you have a lot of them? And it was like, nothing. <laughs> They're not good for anything. <laughs> it's, just the, it's just the pursuit. It's like, why I climbed the mountain? Because it was there. That was. That was this whole thing. I never bothered to try to predict anything or have any expectations about where his videos were going because it just it seems very chaotic. Anyway, Q for Skeppy. Yeah, I'm gonna let you read this one because. Uh, have you ever thought about teaming up with Techno in MCC or MCM? If so, do you think you both would have won? So I almost teamed with Techno for MCM, Minecraft Monday. I asked him to be my teammate, but he had already like had a teammate. I think it was Shotgun Raids. So he won that with Shotgun. But I think if I was on Techno's team, we would have won. I do think so. But MCC, we, I never really played it that much. So I've only done it twice. But I do think if I was on the same team as him, uh, we would have won. So Minecraft Mondays was the two-person teams, mm -hmm. and MCC was the four-person teams, right? right. So um, all through when Minecraft Monday was happening, he was expressing to me a certain amount of frustration with who he was allowed to team up with, and I'm 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 sure he would have done a team with you if he had been able. So anyway, what was your favorite video? that Skeppy and Techno collaborated on. Well, <laughs> you know, I hate to keep beating a dead horse, but you, you could go a long, long way before you, you get better than Skeppy tries to troll me and I troll him first. I, you know, it's like so much of my experience of Technoblade was just like his door is open and I'm hearing screaming coming from his room, <laughs> right? And I would like, I, I was very familiar with your voice you know, before you ever were aware that I existed, just because he's got the, wasn't a headphones guy, he was a speakers guy. When I met you in that hotel lobby, it's like, as soon as you open your mouth, it's like, oh, there's Skeppy. This is, it's been hearing your voice a lot over the years, but you have not been hearing mine over the years. Not over the years. Because no. I'm not a YouTuber. Correct. I didn't used to be a YouTuber. <laughs> I have over five minutes worth of videos up now. Is it Wait, do three I? videos or four? <laughs> I, have three, I have three videos. I don't think it's five full minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was overselling myself. <laughs> By the time anyone hears me say five minutes, it'll be over five minutes because they can't hear me say five minutes until they've seen this video and that video is gonna be over five minutes. Over five minutes. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. He used to say that IRL absolutely the same way. Really, he said I it say in the it game. all the time. Yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, uh, he'd be like, uh, "Do you want to do you want to go out and get pancakes?" And I'd be like, "Sure, but I got to finish this thing first. And so I'm doing something. And then like five minutes later, I'd get a text. It would be like, "Let's go." <laughs>
And then I got like three more minutes worth of stuff and I'm two minutes into it and I hear him downstairs going, let's go! <laughs> anyway, uh, Skeppy. Yes. How did Skeppy feel about, this is from you, Trav, BJJ, which I, maybe that's Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Possibly. We don't, we don't know. Yo, Yo, Trav, BJJ asks, how did Skeppy feel about techno trolling him? Trolling is usually Skeppy's thing. Ah. So I'd like to know, did it bother him when techno would troll him? Honestly, at first, yeah, <laughs> it did. Because I would like to troll people and I would even try and troll techno, hence the title of that <laughs> video. But yeah, in the beginning I was just like, why can't I troll him? Why is it not working? And it would just annoy me and it would piss me off. But <laughs> it just happened so much over and over to where I'm like, okay, this is funny. And it would just become comedic. I would still try, but I'd be laughing instead of like being mad or anything. But yeah, in the beginning I would get annoyed about it. And then I just was just laughing honestly every single time because I, I think I just knew that like anything I tried, <laughs> it would just come back against me. So there was no point trying because it would just get trolling me. So, yeah, in the beginning. All right, so Flame of the West, who I never refer to by that name on Reddit. I always refer to him as Andril, the sword that was broken. Why? The, it's a Lord of the Rings reference. Oh, okay. You've read the Lord of the Rings, no, right? Yeah. I have not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he's a cool guy. Uh, uh, so this is a classic question. For Techno Dad, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized Skeppies or one Skeppy-sized duck? Uh, yeah, great question. And I've been, been pondering this a good bit when I could have been doing something productive. And I think I would prefer to fight one Skeppy-sized duck. So it's 100 duck-sized Skeppies. Now, as, as we were saying earlier, like a duck-sized Skeppy can throw modestly sized rocks. Uh, they can bite. Um, skeppies have uh, actually in their hindquarters uh, poisonous talons. Like there's a little poison gland in the, in the rear uh, limbs. No, that, that's uh, platypuses actually. Oh. It's not Skeppies, M male platypuses which are monotremes. Platypi? I'll ask my wife. Okay. Yeah, I think the thing that people don't appreciate about a hundred duck-sized anything is just how many a hundred is. A hundred is a lot. And if you, you know, I mean, let's say you just immediately set about punting the duck-sized skeppy, so the duck's like three pounds or so. So like a three pound skeppy, you start punting them and you, you, you punt 50 of them. And however long that is, there's been 50 duck sized skeppies wailing on you completely unhindered. Yeah. That's just, that's just not a good recipe. Whereas if you have one skeppy sized duck, okay, so it's like, so now I'm facing down a mallard, but I've got a good weight advantage because I have a good weight advantage on you, I think. Wouldn't this question be rigged then? Because a hundred duck sized anyone would be the same. It would just be a hundred duck sized of the person, right? Compared to one person sized duck. That's true. Two of the inputs into this equation are, you know, the number 100 and the size of a duck, which is, you know, those are both fixed in this case. So if you, as you change out the people, it might go down a different way. But I'm just going to answer the question as asked right. because, again, it is a, a critical consideration. So yeah, a skeppy sized duck is going to have a big bill and it's going to be sharp and there are talons in those webbed feet that are dangerous. But these, these limbs are actually lined in feathers. I mean, if I had to fight someone and I could specify that their limbs are lined in feathers ahead of the fight, I think that would be considered a good advantage. The skeppy sized duck presumably can fly, but you, you know, you only have one thing to keep your attention on. You only have one thing to avoid. It just seems like, it just seems like the way to go. Quack. <laughs> uh, 
I did not expect that. <laughs> okay, I feel like this is a question for you. What was the most impressive thing he'd ever seen Techno do? Yeah. Probably Minecraft Monday, probably that, or MCC. There's a lot of moments in between both of them where Techno had just done a ton of impressive things. So somewhere in those tournaments, if you can pick one, probably that's what I would say. Oh, somewhere in there he got in a plane. A plane? Didn't he get in a plane? Oh, Techno Plane. Techno Plane. Oh, I know what you're talking about. That was in, uh, that was an MCC thing? Yeah, probably. And, uh, oh my gosh, that actually, so, and then, so he got in the vehicle and then the game was absolutely over. And you know what, that actually reminds me of something from my modest video game career. Because I was telling you earlier, I used to play Halo 3 and I was terrible at it until I discovered driving the Warthog. Mm -hmm. And uh, one time we were playing a game and I was playing with some people I play with regularly. This would have been like 2007-ish. We were behind, I think it was 17 to 48 and you played a 50. So the other team had 48. And I had been trying and trying and trying to get a warthog and they had just it was denied over and over again but my favorite gunner and I were running around we are gonna get in that warthog and at that point when it was 17 to 48 we got in the warthog and we won <laughs> that's kind of incredible 50 to 49 it's like once we got in the warthog we held them to a single kill wow we just <laughs> obliterated was, we just <laughs> obliterated them so it's kind of the same, kind of a similar sort of structure. I'm not, of course, I'm not the gamer that my son was, but I had my moments. Just to add on to that, I didn't even mention the Bed Wars win streak. Oh. That has to be said. Yeah. So, also that. That was a good one. Pixel Z of Spook. Now, is that, am I missing something in that name? No. Pixel TZ yeah. of Spook asks, is Skeppy the Six Static all the time, or is it just the mood in his videos? So, uh, it's just the mood in his videos. <laughs> I was curious to know what you'd say, because I have my own answer, but... Well, so it's kind of funny because, you know, the Skeppy that I knew before I met him in real life was at the same energy level of, of uh, exuberance and franticness and... Like, ah! <laughs> as, as Technoblade was. And, uh, uh, you know, when Technoblade got off the game, he would come out and go, hey, you don't want to watch TV? You know, it's just like, when he wasn't being Technoblade, he was really quiet and didn't always have a lot to say, ex except for when he did. And I, that's been my experience of you as well. You're like, in person, pretty quiet. Now, I'm sure you're like super intimidated by my good looks. I think that's gotta be factoring into it. I'm, I know I do fashion modeling now. We discussed that already, so. Yes. I think I've mined all the jokes out of that I can get. <laughs> 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 Sorry. But uh, yeah, you've, you've, there have been a number of occasions where you've just been really quiet. And then, uh, you know, kind of like trying to get a conversation going and you're, I, I, I'm not gonna say you were like, you know, one word kind of non-responses, but there wasn't always a lot coming out. But the, the longer we hang out, the more our conversations are getting deeper, I feel like. Plus, the first time we met in real life, it was like a pretty grim event. We were, we were all not in a great place. Yeah. So. All right, that's, that's my answer. I pretty much have to agree with what you said, though. So, just want to let you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. Yeah. Okay, Upgraded asks, can you call Skeppy a nerd? Nerd. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I honestly didn't think you were going to. Really? No. I knew you were going to do it. 
All right, let's do the next one. We got a ton of these. Will Techno Dad ever show his elbows? Since Technoblade is your son, we will be expecting a lot if you say yes. Will you? Well, I, 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 I don't have a clear answer to that question yet, but I am absolutely very interested in doing a face reveal when I get to 10 million subs. What? Wait, a face, you mean elbow reveal? No, a face reveal. Like, you remember, like, just a few months back, Dream did a face reveal? Yeah. I want to do a face reveal at 10 million subs. <laughs> what? But there's cameras. But this would be like, I would reveal my face. Haven't you done that? No. It's, I mean, it's there, but I haven't revealed oh. it. <laughs> Wait, what more of the elbows? What of the elbows? Okay, let's do the next question. <laughs> What right. just happened? <laughs> Fitboy420 asks, please explain in 200 words or less the concept behind Sun Tzu's quote, know your enemy and know yourself, and you will win 100 battles without defeat, and how it is applicable to Minecraft PvP. Why don't I take the first part of that and you take the second part? Okay. And I'm totally blowing off the 200 words or less part. Okay. I sincerely feel that it is a real challenge for all of us to know ourselves, to understand who we are, what our strengths and weaknesses are, to perceive ourselves clearly. It is massively easier to perceive other people. If you look out in the world, and I find it often quite easy to see like, oh, look at how that person is doing something really effectively, or oh, look at how that person is making this mistake again and again and so forth. And all the time, it's so hard to see the things that are easy in other people, it's hard to see those things in myself. And I, there have been plenty of occasions over the years where I've spotted some aspect of human nature and been able to see people, oh, look at this, look at this, you know, dysfunctional behavior that I'm seeing these, all these people doing. And then after years of having seen that in other people, suddenly wake up one morning and go, oh, I do that all the time. And it's always, always kind of a shock. But to know yourself is to understand what you're capable of and what you're not capable of. And in a art of war kind of concept, context, that's obviously very important. And the same thing applies to knowing your enemy. I wasn't funny at all with that, but. No, I, I appreciate the seriousness to the answer because I do think that was a really good answer. Mine was going to be funny, but now that you said that, I kind of ruined it. But Minecraft PvP, I, I was mean, I was trolling you. No, you were. <laughs> no, you were not. <laughs> you know what? I would like to know how do you think that's applicable to Minecraft PvP as well, if you have any way that it is. Um. Well, for example. If I ever had had the misfortune of having to fight Technoblade, uh, one of the things I would do is I would never fight him on any narrow area because he's just going to use knockback to not have to fight me anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Like one thing of knockback and I'm plummeting to my death. So I don't want to be anywhere where knockback is going to cause me to be plummeting to my death because I know that is a thing that I would know about my enemy. Yeah, that makes sense. Let's do the next one. Techno Dad, how did you feel initially when Techno wanted to drop out of college and what did he have to convince you for your approval? Or maybe like, what did he have to do to convince you? Well, when was that? So the thing is, I think by the time that happened, I think he was already legally an adult. I mean, I totally, when I first started having kids, I was like, oh sure, I understand the parent-child relationship. I just dictate what they will do and not do and you know like you have this crazy imaginary idea that your kids are going to listen to you and pay attention and f follow your advice <laughs> they don't do that so much they do it some but uh it's it's hard to predict so you know by the time it was him talking about leaving college i mean his his YouTube career was kind of like, and I guess if I if I were if I were worried about uh, some aspect of dropping out of college, 
I guess another thing that's important to mention is that what college means when I went to college is not what college means to people going to college today. If I was talking to a young person and they were saying, I want to drop out of college, and they were someone who had all kinds of terrible misconceptions about how the world worked, or they were someone who never read a book or didn't um, engage with the world or was super into, uh, you know, we have the, the, the modern sort of person now who's like, well, I know better than the doctors do or I know better than the scientists do because whatever reason they come up with. But Techno was none of those things. He was a voracious reader and he was also really good at making his own education. Like he learned stuff from class and he read all kinds of things. So I was never, I was never worried about him being sufficiently educated or being sufficiently knowledgeable. So that took away a whole lot of the, of the concern there. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, have you or Skeppy interacted with the other techno mods being Sky Power Girl, Jillian, David, and Jabberjaws? They have done a lot for techno and it would be nice to give them a lot more credit for what it is worth and to have you interact with them as, like Hannah, techno meant a lot to them. Well, so, I mean, first of all, I will call Hannah up just to give her a hard time for at the drop of a hat. Technoblade and me owe a lot to these five people, Hannah, Sky Power Girl, Jillian, David, and Jabberjaws, and I am very grateful to them for what they have done. And honestly, I feel like I haven't done great by them because I was completely incommunicado in the aftermath of Alex dying, and I think that really made a lot of, I'm sorry. That snuck up on me. I think that really made um, a lot of difficulty for them, even as they were dealing with the same grief as I was dealing with. Only they had, you know, immediate responsibilities to the Discord world, and and I just sort of left them, you know, with nothing. And I I fixed that eventually, but I still haven't. Well as average gamer writes, it would be nice to give them a lot more credit. Let me just give them all the credit. I'm very grateful to them for what they have done. And I will say, obviously Hannah is the one I've interacted with the most, but I have had a modest amount of interactions with, I don't know that I've ever s spoken with Jillian, but I have certainly DM'd Sky Power Girl in particular and a little bit of David and Jabber Jaws. Uh, I guess I will just say there was a conversation I was having with Sky Power Girl. I was trying to get my point across, and so I made a big elaborate reference to a specific episode of Steven Universe, and she was like, I love that episode. I feel like there's opportunities there for us to be more connected in time, but I don't know what to do with the Discord, and I guess what I just really need to do is just let them tell me what we're gonna do and then just do it. I'm not feeling self-conscious at all after saying all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, let's just drink some water. <laughs> okay, so maybe Lore, another person I see on the subreddit all the time, asks Technodad, did you use the Technoblade Never Dies blanket for the blanket fort? <laughs> and uh, no, but now that you've given me the idea, it is inevitable that we are going to add the Technoblade Never Dies blanket to the blanket fort. All I've really done with it so far, so far, so far, <laughs> have I been talking for too long, do you think? Nah. All I've done with it so far is uh, uh, splay it out over the couch and try to get my dog to pose on it in such a way that you could see his necktie because it's very dapper. The dog has a very dapper necktie right now. I'm speaking, of course, of Floop. You've seen the necktie. Yes. You have seen the necktie. I have. And the blanket for it. And the blanket for it. You've seen the blanket for it, yes. What was your first impression of Techno 
and how has that changed over the years? I love your interactions so much and they really help me get through the news and look at the positives Techno left behind. Um, sorry, I'm like... <clears throat> Honestly, the hacker. <laughs> first impression, if I'm being honest. But um, no, I mean, I got to know Techno more and more as we collabed and became greater friends. And I really always looked up to him. I always will. And that friendship and that respect and all those things really, really just, I don't know. I feel like I really got to click with Techno and I'm very, very lucky. So it only changed to become more and more positive over the years for me. Uh, my first impression of Techno was that he was uh, covered in this weird goop and that he was naked and that he was kind of like crying, like <laughs> like he just kept crying and crying. But um, that changed. Uh, uh, he got cleaned off and he <laughs> began to wear clothes and, and he became much more articulate, like a, like a completely different level of articulation from my first impression. I can't believe you just answered that question. <laughs> well, they, I mean, it didn't say it was for you. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I mean, he made a very strong first impression on me. I remember that first interaction really well. Yeah. <laughs> I went from being someone with no children to a dad. That's a big life transition. Uh, Evil Archangel asks, how did you come up with your name? Which, by the way, is a question that I asked Skeppy like yesterday or the day before. Cause I didn't know. Yeah, honestly, I didn't think it was that cool of a story. I think it's like lame, but the truth I'll is- I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> the truth is I used to play on a server called MCPVP back in the day. And I just play Hunger Games every single day. And all the players who were really good or supposedly really good had PVP at the end of their name. So I was like, I have to be good. I have to have PVP at the end of my name. So I chose the word skeptical and made it skeptical PVP. Skeptical, cause like, oh, is he hacking? Or is he just really good? And that's the story. I mean, it was skeptical PVP, people called me Skep, and then it evolved into Skeppy. That is the story. Lame? Cool? I'm gonna go with cool. Cool. I liked it. I was very, I was like, oh, wow, when you told me the first time. So, obviously cool. I have a question as well. I'm not sure Yeah. Um, <clears throat> if you know the exact answer, but how? Technoblade came up with his name and why a pig was his skin. <laughs> I asked him, so that's a pretty cool name. Where did it come from? And he's like, well, you know, like a blade, you know, like like a sword, like, but techno. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like, that's not really an answer at all, but that was, that was what there was. And the pig thing, whenever I asked him that, it was always like, you know, like, like, um, like they have pigs in Minecraft, so like a pig, and there wasn't, I mean, he was so articulate about so many things that it was always funny when you ran into something where he was just like, I think I might have an insight. So we mentioned that thing uh, where, where he was playing Skywars, but he didn't use a weapon, just gonna use his hands. Now, weapons are for casuals. In our culture, a pig doesn't have a great reputation, right? It's like, oh, pig. I think maybe he was just gonna try hard it, right? He was gonna be like a pig and make everybody love him anyway. You see what I'm saying? It's just like everything else he did, he wanted to turn the, turn the difficulty all the way up. Yeah. That idea kind of makes some sense to me. I see what you mean. I never thought I would love a pig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will we ever get to see Floof and Rocco together? You're both the best. He means me, right? Both. <laughs> he means you and Rocco, I think. Oh, yeah. Well, I hope they do. That would be pretty great. They're pretty close, so maybe one day. They're pretty similar. Yeah. But as I mentioned previously, Rocco is like dog-sized. Yeah. No, I meant close like distance. Right. Oh, okay. But yeah, you're right as well. Maybe what we could do is like split-screen video. Make it look like they're in the same room <laughs> with visual trickery. Edit I don't know what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So, 
Uh, the illustrious Strawberry GS asks, Skeppy, what did you think of the Technoblade 10 million elbow reveal? Not that I'm biased or anything. And I want to explain that last thing that she said before we go into your answer. Um, so the Technoblade 10 million elbow reveal was something where Strawberry GS did the vast majority of the work. She was the one who was like, oh, you should do this. Oh, let me, let me do all the work for you, and then you can take all the credit. I don't know if she actually said that, but it's, <laughs> it seems like that's what happened, was that she did all the work, and then somehow I got a bunch of credit for it. I was really clear on Reddit that Strawberry was the one who gets the credit for this video, but I think if you, I think there's a lot more people on YouTube than are on Reddit, so I think like a lot of people may have been not sufficiently informed about the critical role that Strawberry played in that video. So uh, I wanted to take the opportunity to make that clear. Hey, Strawberry. All right. What did you think of the 10 million, uh, the 10 million subs elbow reveal, which came out on Christmas Day? I thought it was one of the greatest things of all mankind. <laughs> You know how long I've been waiting? <laughs> to, or so many people have been waiting. I mean, who knows how long. Many, many years. So, yeah. One of the greatest videos I've ever seen. Not that I'm biased or anything. Hmm. Yeah, that was pretty cool. You know, I'm always talking to that camera. I, I'm going to talk to one of the other cameras. I wish I did that one. How are you? Well, that's the, I put that one there for you. And then that one's for me. And then this one is for us. Let's do that again. This one is for us. This one is for me. And then you say... That one's for me. Yeah. That's the whole miracle of a three camera shoot. Maybe I could do little. <laughs> <laughs> that. <laughs> I could do little studio. Tour. Tour thing. Like Mr. Techno Dad's guide to making videos that get a lot of hits on YouTube when you have like no YouTuber background or don't really know anything. What you do is you, you call up a major YouTuber and then you invite them to come over to your house and then you shoot a video where you talk about a famous relative of yours. See the formula I got yeah. going? I will say that people want to know where Technoblade cooked. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's coming. Little Easter egg. It's coming, but um, you've seen it. I'm just going to say one word on that topic and that word is pancakes. That's to what their, <laughs> <laughs> that's to what their appetite. And so our last question uh, of the day is activate Windows. <laughs> Go to settings to activate oh, Windows. I love that. That's that is a good, I think that's a pretty insightful question. All right, so we're sort of transitioning out of question answering now with a question. Um, does that say Robo Burrito? Robo Burrito asks, how are you today? Somebody else asked a very similar question, but we, 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 we Robo Burrito is the one who made it onto the slide. So um, when I went and picked up Skeppy at the airport, you know, there was kind of like a elephant in the room, which is the event that led us to be talking to each other. And as much as I have been very open about talking about that stuff with lots of people, particularly on Reddit, um, I was really reluctant. I, you know, I was just like, how's your channel going? What do you got coming up? Do you like this kind of cuisine? Let me show you the blanket fort. I was into all these different things and, um, and I didn't, at first, I just didn't mention Technoblade at all. And I was like, as I was doing it, I was noticing myself not doing it. And I kept thinking like, well, I should say something. And then I just didn't. And then you brought it up. Or you opened the door somehow. I don't remember what it was. But, um, well, I think it was the, it was the questions, now that, now that yeah. I say that. It yeah. was the questions. We were going through the questions. And I asked you, how are you doing? Yeah, and I sort of half answered it because I'm like I said, not very great at answering in full detail. So I said, I'm good, or I'm okay, or whatever I said. But um, 
it's been really nice hanging out with you and just not having to kind of think about, like you said, um, the thing that originally got us to know each other and hang out because I would like to continue to hang out without having to have like thoughts of sadness in my head and I know that those things will come. I can only imagine how hard it is dealing with it, like being at home and stuff, but like being and staying in like the guest room that you allowed me to stay in, I mean, it was just, I'm kind of rambling, but I don't know, like just being there, I could nonstop just think about like, I don't know, my head was just continuously blowing of just like, oh, I wonder this, that. And this is why I try not to get into it because then I just, my thoughts um, are hard to put into functional sentences. But to answer your question, I'm, I'm okay, I'm doing good. So yeah. <laughs> so you know, like, Humor is a critical part of life, and sometimes when things are bad, we use humor to help us get through it. And sitting right next to that is, I'm going to use humor to avoid thinking about things that are painful. And, and so, like, I'm going to use humor to help me cope with things that are painful is really functional, and I'm going to use humor to help me avoid thinking about things that are painful or to distract me from those things is kind of counterproductive. And they're so close. They're so close, right? So that's a thing that I watch for in myself sometimes because I use humor as a big part of my life. And I mean, lots of things about my life are going great, and I'm so busy, and I have all my other kids, and I have the studio, and you know, now I'm making YouTube videos and you know, fashion photography. And I can just, at this point, I can just like go and go and go and go for days without revisiting the grief that I still have which definitely has a positive side to it, right? I, I still have my life to live and I still have to be the dad to lots of people, possibly hundreds of thousands of people, if we're counting Reddit. So that helps me function. But then the grief is also right there. I haven't told anyone this yet, um, but it, it seems relevant. It's like a week ago, I had a dream. I'm gonna tell you, cause you're like, here, that'll kind of help me. A week ago or so, I had a dream. And in the dream, I was, you know, me, I was a dad, and I had my boy in the dream, the dream world, he was 12, and we were over at a relative's house, and it was a big thing. There was like all kinds of people of all kinds of ages, like a big, big gathering of Greeks, like I had a bunch of times in my life. And, um, and I'm going around the house, and I can't find him. I couldn't find him, but I knew he was supposed to be in the house somewhere. And I, you know, dream logic, right? It, it presents you with a situation that doesn't necessarily make any sense, but it's like, that's your situation. So I was looking for him, and I was really worried, which it's like, I don't even know why I'm worried, because big house full of relatives, that's pretty safe. And finally I found him. He was in somebody's bedroom and there were a bunch of kids in there and he was on the computer playing video games. And, um, I, and I found him and I said, uh, I said to myself, oh, thank goodness. Thank goodness I found him. At least he's not dead. And it, like inside the dream, I was like, Why would I say something like that? And, uh, it, you know, it was so incongruous that it woke me up. And so I'm waking up, and I'm waking up to the transition of this idea of he's in this, he's in this kid's bedroom playing video games, and I'm, and I'm coming to consciousness, and it's like, No, he's not dead. He's playing a video game. He's not really dead, is he? 
and then realizing it, it's like, oh, that's just the dream. The reality is that he's dead. <laughs> and, uh, and, I, and when I woke up, I had, you know, my face was all wet. Thanks a lot, dream. I'm not referring to the <laughs> I can't help but make jokes. Um, but that experience of having that dream kind of underlined something for me that I'd been been kind of wrestling with about grief is the realization that um, grief, I, I've said a bunch of times, grief needs to move, right? You're, you're, it's important not to let your heart get stuck. Yes. And you have to, you have to move and you have to live, right? You, you have to continue to live, to have your life, to grow, to connect with other people, to engage. And things like this grief are things that we don't want to engage with. It's not pleasant. It's painful to engage with. But life means you have to engage. You have to engage. And it's And my life is going great. A lot of things about my life are going great. And I am so grateful to so many people, all of the members of my family. I'm grateful to my boy. And I'm grateful to the, all the Discord mods. And I'm grateful to uh, uh, you and you and, and so many people, but I have this pain. I have this pain now. And it's a permanent part of who I am. Not to say that it's frozen. It's, it's, still a thing that moves and I'm still engaging with the world the pain of loss will always be there what it means and how it feels will change and grow and so forth but it will always be there and maybe that um, dream was kind of a last effort on the part of my mind to try to say, maybe it doesn't have to be there. Maybe I can pretend things are okay. And waking up from that dream was realizing, no. This is what happened. Come on. So that was pretty heavy.
talking earlier and we discussed that and I thought what you said was really good. Thank you. So, so I kind of want to ask again. I think, um, you really fucking are. Yeah. I don't know. I think I just... I feel... like... I... almost avoid it, which is horrible, but, like, I continuously keep watching videos of, you know... and... I'll do it over and over and over because I just love like watching that re like visiting really old videos. I've just been doing that like the plane ride here. All I did was watch technical videos. I'm not kidding. And on one hand, it's really, really, really like awesome because I don't know. I just learn more and more and more about him the more like I watch like his old videos because I feel like we both are very similar in a lot of ways like how we both started at like around the same age just making Minecraft content and I can relate to that a lot just like video after video just except he's obviously way better than me but <laughs> watching the videos over and over like is awesome but it really I think it's going to be very very different as a father but from the little that I can feel that I do I really do and I mean it because I don't know how to fill a void like that because you can't so yeah I mean, I'm okay. I'm, I'm fine. I just... Like, I don't know how to answer these types of questions unless they're very specific, but I hope that I, um... Oh my gosh, what am I doing? <laughs> you were being completely genuine and open. And I feel like that is a service to the community. I explained some of my reasoning about that when we were talking upstairs. I'm just really glad for what you said just now. And I totally get feeling self-conscious about saying it on camera. <laughs> uh, you got way more experience being on camera than I do. But, um, yeah, I think it's important to acknowledge that it hurts like hell, you know? Um, there's an aspect of all of this that is actually kind of historically unprecedented which is that thanks to the internet, and YouTube in particular in this case, but thanks to modern communication systems, there are, like, so, I mean, my relationship with, I'll call him Alex, was a perfectly ordinary relationship such that the world has been having that kind of relationship for tens of thousands of years, which is why I wanted to get you to address that because the relationship that you had with him and the relationship that all of you have and had with him is a kind of relationship that did not exist 100 years ago and really is different from anything that existed more than 10 years ago, although we, we do start to see some modern kinds of things creeping in over previous decades, but this specific thing is new. And 
we don't have a lot of examples of grief hitting this broadly. I see you guys sometimes describing how devastated you are and then finishing it up with saying, but I have no right to feel this. That's, that's not right. That's not right. You know, there, there isn't such a thing as like having a right to feel something or not having the right to feel something. We are feeling creatures. Human beings are feeling creatures. And yes, we have the intellect and we have the heart. And the heart is critical. The understanding of the heart and the way it moves and the way it responds is the most critical thing about being a human being, about going from a child who doesn't understand anything about its own heart to what we hope is a mature, understanding, compassionate, loving person who is capable of feeling connections for other people, feeling empathy, and so forth and so on. And so I thank you for sharing what you have shared because it kind of opens this up. Thank you for being there for me and helping me express myself. I have trouble doing so sometimes, especially in, you know, situations like this so thank you as well yeah and you're welcome and thank you for everything that you've done for me and my family you know my twins just <laughs> talk about you all the time man they're great yeah we have fun I feel like we're at a natural stopping point. Yeah. Yeah. At least we got through all the questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, did, we did get through all the questions. Okay, so uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for listening to all of our dopey jokes about a hundred ducks. No, it was just one duck and a hundred skeppies. Yeah. Quack. <laughs> um, and I guess I'm wishing to everyone that you continue to study your own heart and learn as much as you can. So, thank you, and thank you. Okay, so uh, the illustrious Strawberry GS asks, for Skeppy, would you teach Mr. Technodad how to play Minecraft? Or perhaps better, if you teach Mr. Technodad <laughs> how to play Minecraft for a video, how much would you troll him versus teach him right? So, we'll just start by talking about the first part, I was thinking for a long time that I was going to be fine not learning Minecraft, and it just doesn't seem like things are going down that way. It seems like I'm gonna have to learn at least some things about Minecraft, and one of the things that I would really like to know how to do is how to craft a diamond sword. Yeah, that's. I would like you to teach me how to craft a diamond sword. I can do that. That sounds good. Uh, we can hop in my van and drive to Minecraft. Mm -hmm. So, do you want to go, like, right now? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. All right. Don't hit the mic. The microphone.
We need to go this way! So, uh, what are they doing? So, the first thing you do in any Minecraft world is you punch a tree. Oh look! A tree! Alright, now we have our crafting table. Okay, uh, what do we do with the crafting table? Okay, well, I guess we craft. Lucky for you, I have diamonds. Oh, alright. Diamonds for gold. Uh, so just place one diamond on the top and one under it. Oh wait, we need a stick. Wait, do you have a stick? Um, it's a forest, so I assume. Uh, would this work? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. And then the stick goes under the diamonds. It goes there. And now we have a diamond sword. Cool. You should probably hold on to this. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, so we could, like, I can like stab you, right? Well, Dad, you could, but like, how many lives do you have? One. Oh, well, that, that's not very many. No, this is hardcore. If you die, you lose. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you laughing like that? No. <laughs>